but the bottom line is when you have something that makes predictions, the more powerful a scientific theory is, the more predictions it can make and the more retrodictions it can explain. In other words, it can explain mm. things that used to happen. You asked me about gravity. Yep. So will we ever know that gravity has been overturned or we were wrong? I suspect no. And the reason is because we know it's already wrong. It's wrong in a, in a certain sense. When we say that something is a scientific fact, let's say I say, do you believe the earth is round? Yes. Okay. Well, you're totally wrong. <laughs> you know, if I say to you, is the earth flat? You'll say no. You'll also be, you'll, you see, you'll be right if you say no, right? But we have proven that though, because it's here. We, we, okay. So, so the earth is not a perfect sphere. Right. It has it's some a, yeah. spherical yes. property. It's actually pretty oblate. It has, it has properties like a pear. If but you, it's not flat. It's not flat. So right. if you said it's flat, you're wrong. And if you say it's a sphere, you're wrong. But as Isaac Asimov said, you're less wrong. If you say it's a sphere than if it's a flat, if you said it was perfectly mm -hmm. flat. Now, what does that imply? That means that there'll be some perfect, there is some perfect description. And even if I said it's pear-shaped, I'm also wrong, but it's getting closer and closer to the scientific truth. Science is not about saying provable facts. Again, we can't prove that fact that the earth is a prolate spheroid with these spherical harmonic contributions, that distortions at this, you know, 0.01% level, the way that I can prove two plus two equals four, even though that'll take 400 pages of abstract mathematics to prove that simple sounding statement. You can't say, oh, well, you have one finger, you have two. No, 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 that's not what we're talking about. The actual mathematics behind proving two plus two equals four is significantly advanced. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not basic mathematics like I teach to a, to a you know, five-year-old. But there is no such thing as proving physically that the earth is a sphere or a pear or whatever shape you want, a donut. There is no way to prove that. So scientifically, all we can do is say something is wrong. But what you should do is say things that are accurate as much as you can with precision. So let me talk mm. about the difference between accuracy and precision. If I say you weigh less than a thousand pounds, I mean you've been going to the gym. You look pretty, 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 <laughs> pretty diesel body. But um, but you definitely do. That's accurate. Is it precise? It doesn't tell you anything. Absolutely correct. It is not precise. So you want to have accuracy and precision. So I want to say the Earth is not a sphere. Then I have to add some terms to it. That makes it more precise. But it's still not perfectly accurate. Mm. So you want to try to convert. Now, my question, and I think what Eric can, you know, complains about people like Michio Kaku, is that he'll say something akin to, you weigh less than 1,000 pounds. And he'll say, isn't mm. this great? We now have a scientifically testable you know, fact that, okay, so I actually had literally one of the f fathers of modern string theory. His name is Kamran Vafa. He's a brilliant man, a wonderful mensch of a guy up at, up at Harvard. And he was on my podcast, and he said, no, Brian, it's not true that string theory doesn't make any predictions. He basically said, no, string theory predicts the mass of the electron. And I was like, I didn't know that. Uh, that's kind of news to me. What is it? What's the prediction? First of all, it's not a prediction. It's a retro. We already have mm -hmm. the measurement. So now he's saying, where does it come from purely mathematically within the confines of, of the limitations of string theory? He said, yes, we have limits on it. I said, I, obviously, you're not going to say it's exactly, you know, 10 to the minus 28 blah, 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 with 65 decimal places behind the 28. No, no. But he said it's greater than effectively, it would be like saying you're away between one kilogram, you, and 10 to the 30th kilograms, except it's put a negative so sign. So wide. Yeah. yeah. But what could those numbers be, Julian? What could possibly be? Pick a number. What is the range of those exponents? It could be anything from negative infinity to positive infinity. Yeah, numbers we can't concept right. at all. Exactly. But not only that we can't concept. So actually, it's a very accurate thing within the broad range of all it could be from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's exactly, actually very accurate, it's, right? It's just like me lot. saying, like, <laughs> you, uh, uh, between um, uh, zero pounds and infinity pounds, okay, so a very, I put a thousand kilograms, rather, uh, that's very accurate compared to what that could be the space. So that's why I think people like Eric and people like me, to be honest, I won't speak for Eric, but but for me, get frustrated. Because um, when we talk, when we hear other theorists talk about this, I get very upset uh, because I think that their job is, is very envious. They get to literally think. They don't. They don't necessarily have to travel to Chile and deal with, um, you know, dumping concrete on, in the wrong place and getting electric. You think it was hard to set up this beautiful studio? <laughs> Imagine doing it at seventeen thousand feet, wearing a hard hat, oxygen mask, steel-toed boots, wearing a life-saving vest in case you fall over and die, getting checked for all sorts of high-altitude sickness and diseases, having to pass a physical exam. You know, versus sitting That's in difficult. your office. Yeah, sitting yeah. in your office and you know, living the life of the mind. Now, when you ask those people, when I ask Sabina Hassenfelder or I ask a Stephen Wolfram, and I say, well, what do you think about Eric's theory? Or what do you think about uh, um, you know, Stephen's theory to, to Sabina Hassenfelder? And they'll say, oh, I don't have time. 
you don't have time. Like, mm. what else are you working on? I mean, she's got a thriving YouTube channel, and she's a, she's you know that's great. That's her job now, and she she is doing research, and and she's to be commended for it. But she's not a professor. She's not doing, and even is neither is Stephen Wolfram. He's not a professor. I mean, he owns a business, and he's very good at what he does. But to say I don't have time, all I have time for is to look at my own. Uh, theory and, and kind of verify. That would be like me saying, I'm going to ignore these other experiments that are actually saying, Brian Keating, you saw dust. You claim to see the origin of the universe. You saw dust. You're a fraud. You're a charlatan. You're a gr- I, If I just mm. did that and I didn't listen to the critics, that would be pathetic. And and yet I do feel like there's an unwillingness for these theorists to spend a You're couple hours. You're referring to your bicep. That's the bicep experiment. Got it. Yeah. Okay. 